Over a quarter of a million kids missed school last week, either because of infection or, more usually, having to self-isolate when a classmate tests positive for coronavirus. Some schools have even been forced to close. It has been the worst week for disruption since schools reopened in March. Now, clearly, this is a nightmare for working parents, not least of all also for our GB News presenter Isabel Webster, who's clearly pretty frustrated by all of this. She has tweeted... Uh, her experience saying that years four, five and six are isolating at my son's school for 10 days. Why? The parents and teachers are all vaccinated and the grandparents and the vulnerable are double vaccinated. Why must eight-year-olds go through this again? They've missed so much already. CC and Ian, Gavin Williamson and Matt Hancock. Well, parents are also frustrated at being banned from their kids' sports days. Meanwhile, UEFA officials can pop over, watch the football without having to quarantine. The British Grand Prix is going to go ahead next month in front of a full capacity crowd. Pretty extraordinary stuff, isn't it? Well, to consider the impact of the disruption is having on children, we're joined by Jeff Barton. He is the General Secretary of the Association of School and College Leaders. A very good morning uh, to you, uh, Jeff. We were just morning. reading out there one of our colleagues' tweets who's clearly very frustrated. Uh, how frustrated are parents? How frustrated are you? Oh, I mean, I think Isabel's tweet there speaks on behalf of the nation. Uh, essentially, we cannot, we cannot carry on like this, can we? Uh, you know, but those of us who were working in education came into education to do education, and yet you look at the stuff which we're dealing with. Uh, it, it is so disruptive to young people, um, so problematic, particularly for those who are worrying about what their exams may or may not look like next year. So what we're saying to the Department for Education, and I represent 21,500 school and college leaders, is this cannot be the norm from September. We recognise that some schools close in the next two or three weeks. So, OK, let's keep this bubble system if that's what you're going to tell us to do. But this cannot be the new normal from September. We owe it to young people in particular and to their parents, but also, frankly, people working in education that we have some stability and some confidence uh, and just just very quickly and finally on this it talks about school sports day it does seem rather odd that we've got you know tens of thousands of people going to sports events it's outdoors sports days well, why are they not being allowed to go ahead well the, the government guidance says the sports days can go ahead, but they have to go ahead with certain guidelines. It, it will, as you imply, seem a bit rich, having seen 60,000 people head to Wembley uh, on public transport the other day, that you can't, in your primary school, uh, hold the sports day without keeping bubbles separately. That is, you know, year fives can't run against year fours. You have to wipe down the javelin if you're doing javelin between it. This is the bizarre world we are in at the moment. So it's not quite saying sports days won't run. It's saying they have to run rather differently. And I think the reality is that what some schools are saying is, look, with all the other stuff we're dealing with at the moment, this year of all years, either the prom, the sports day won't happen. That's a huge shame for those children and young people. But that's the strange times we're living in.